Crackers, written by Michael Brandt, an excerpt from a full feature script. Internal, the big top, night. An empty circus tent. Faded crimson fabric seats encircle the dusty ring of the big top. From one of the aisles to the left, a dwarf sprints into the center of the ring, stumbling over a clod of elephant dung on the floor. The white of his clown costume is barely discernible from the amount of blood splattered across it. He is gasping for breath and clearly agitated. A moment later, a woman in a wedding dress sprints into the ring, hot on the heels of the dwarf. With a feral cry, she leaps upon the dwarf and proceeds to repeatedly hit the dwarf across the skull with a frying pan. Stop! <laughs> Get off me! This hurts me more than it hurts you! With the <sighs> final wipe, we hear the dwarf's skull crack and watch his body go limp. The bride gets to her feet, exhausted, and takes a moment to catch her breath. Rolling her eyes, she reaches up and dabs at a large gash on her forehead. Studying the blood on her hand, dizziness overcomes the bride. A moment later, she slumps to the ground, landing on her rear, frying pan still clenched tight in her hand. Who knew midgets were so tough? The sound of hardened shoes running on gravel. From an aisle to the right, a woman enters the, ri the ring and skids to a halt. She is dressed in a harlequin costume and is clutching a small flask in one hand and a lighter in the other. The woman stares at the lifeless corpse of the dwarf in shocked horror. Crackers? Crackers, baby! The bride slowly gets to her feet, frying pan at the ready. You bitch, you absolute bitch! Taking a slug of liquid from the flask, Harlequin raises the cigarette lighter to her mouth, her thumb striking at the spark wheel. As the flame ignites into being, Harlequin spits lighter fluid forth at the bride. In the same moment, the bride launches the frying pan from her hand, sending it spiraling towards Harlequin. A nanosecond later, and the frying pan smashes into Harlequin's jaw, lighter fluid erupting from her broken jaw across the top half of her body engulfing Harlequin in the ball of flames. Screeching in agony, Harlequin staggers back into the seats behind, writhing and howling. Sorry, Wanda. Rolling her neck as if to stretch out some unseen knot, the bride steps over crackers and walks to the frying pan. Kicking dust at it, the bride puts out the flames that have blackened the wooden handle. To the left of the circus ring, a man in a scuffed and dirty tuxedo enters. He stops at the edge of the ring, staring in disbelief, first at the lifeless body of Crackers, and then to the burning body of Wanda. What in God's name? What, what happened here? Now, I know what this looks like. What? What does this look like, Maris? I understand that you're going to be a little mad, but I think in light of what has happened over the last 24 hours, I think you all agreed that this was probably going to happen eventually. What? What are you talking about? What could, what could possibly explain all of this? Now, do you remember when you told me that your family was a circus? I thought you meant they were crazy, like most people's families are, you know? Is that... Is that my mother's frying pan? Was. Was your mother's frying pan. Was. You lied to me about your family, Tony. I lied. I lied? Yes, you lied. And by lied, I mean you went to town on one of the most fantastically inaccurate and unbelievably misrepresented versions of the truth I think any human being has ever conceived. Hey, babe, want to meet my parents? They pose as a harmless small-town family-run circus, but are in fact a gang of homicidal, child-stealing, batshit, crazy, cannibalistic fuck biscuits. Fuck biscuits. And the fact that you managed to keep all of this hidden from me right up until the night of our wedding day is testament to how unbelievably out of touch with reality you are. What were you thinking? That I wouldn't find out? Selecting a chair, Tony sits down and loosens his tie. So, that's what this is all about. Uh, yeah. 
you remember when we went to that amusement arcade on the pier that time? What was the name of that place? The bride cautiously slides her right foot behind her towards the frying pan. Falco's! That, that was the place. God, that had really slipped my mind for a minute. Anyway, d- d- do you remember what we talked about at the end of the pier? Yeah, I have to admit it's not right there at the front of my mind right now. Dead bodies lying around and such. You, you had a candy floss. I had a hot dog, I, I think, and had those nasty little gherkins all over them. You know, you know I, I only got those so that you, you could have them. You like to do that. Still pickles off my hot dog. Honey, ain't nothing I'd rather forget right now than your hot dog. So you're standing there looking all incredible and you got this huge grin across your face and I, I, I ask you what you're smiling about. <laughs> the bride takes a small step backwards, her dress brushing over the frying pan, concealing it. To which you, you gaze up at the sky and you've got this Look on your face like everything's magical, and you, you you get that grin that looks like looks like you're five years old in a candy shop, and you say to me, "This, right now, this is where I could stay forever." And that's when I knew. Knew what? That you would get it, my family, where I came from. I mean, eventually, of course. <laughs> But you, you would get it because you understood magic, what it means to create all of this. All of this? Really? Yes, this is real. This is what the world is really like. That, that heady mix of fun and horror, exhilaration and fear. Don't you feel it? Nauseous. I feel nauseous. That'll pass. Ah, the first kill or two is always a bit of a crazy experience, but once you get used to it, <laughs> it's like riding a bike. I know what you need. I know where my dad keeps his bottles of schnapps stashed. We can grab a truck, head on up to the hill, watch the sunrise. You see that? That right there. That's why this isn't going to work. I don't suppose you got a light. The bride stares at Tony in bewilderment, hesitating for a moment. Rolling her eyes, the bride turns and bends down to the floor behind her, picking up the lighter on the ground. As she reaches for the lighter, her other hand slips to the frying pan and pulls it up behind her dress. The bride turns and tosses the lighter to Tony, who catches it and lights his cigarette, slipping the lighter into his jacket pocket. Thanks. You were saying? Most couples have arguments, disagreements and such. It's normal. Something bad happens, they talk or fight or leave each other or disagree or just generally try and find a way through it. You, you sit calmly smoking a cigarette, whilst the body of your dwarven best man, with a smashed in skull, I might add, and the burning corpse of a fire breathing hat check girl, lie no more than 15 feet away from you, as you sit reminiscing. Do you see? Do you see how batshit crazy, unable to raise kids with you type of person you are? Tony puts out the cigarette. In the distance, the sound of sirens. You called the police? To be honest, that sounds more like fire engine sirens. You can probably see the fire from the town center by now. I set light to all the caravans. I set light to your mother's caravan first. You know, after I let those two kids out of the cage under her bed. If the police turn up, that's probably more down to those two kids and the phone I gave them. The bride slumps back against the ring edge, just a few inches away from Wanda's now smoldering corpse. But hey, it's just a guess. Tony casually steps into the center of the ring. You know, that must have taken some doing, uh, bashing in his skull like that. It's a good frying pan. (laughs) An uncomfortable silence hangs in the air. Tony rushes forward, his face one of abject rage. Just as Tony stretches out to grab her, the bride swings the frying pan, smashing it directly across Tony's face. 
Tony spins in midair and hits the ground with an unconscious thud. For the second time, the bride slides to the floor, landing squarely on her behind. Tossing the frying pan at Tony's head, she grunts. The frying pan bounces off his head with an odd crack and spins into the dust. As the sound of tires squealing to a halt outside brings her out of her daze, the bride leans forward and searches through Tony's top pocket, removing the cigarettes. Placing a cigarette to her lips, the bride turns to her right and lights the cigarette on Harlequin's smouldering corpse. She takes a moment to blow out the fantastic smoke. Damn good frying pan. End. <laughs>